if we are not living the Beatitudes, we cannot do what Jesus teaches to do. In other words, the Beatitudes were the introduction for our identity before we start to do something. You cannot love your enemies if you are not meek. You cannot pursue purity if you don't have a pure heart. You cannot uh, love your enemy if you, ha you don't have mercy on you. And the list goes on and on and on. So before we listen to the Sermon of Jesus in the mountain, we have to leave the Beatitudes. So more than doing, Jesus wants us to be someone. In other words, we have to be the Beatitudes, to have the attitudes of being like Jesus, not just to try to do the Beatitudes with our, our efforts. Now, of course, we know in the world there are people who are by nature meek or gentle or kind. They have mercy. But the, the, the Beatitudes that Jesus was teaching is not something that comes from your nature because it would be unfair for it doesn't work with this kind of talents or, or attitudes in, 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 their, in their life. I consider one of them. If I, by nature, have to be merciful, poor in the spirit, meek, then I disqualify to be a follower of Jesus. So being a Christian, it means that I let God, his life, live in me. So I, by reflection, live in the beatitude because I let the Holy Spirit work in my life. Be a Christian instead to try to do Christianity. It was Jesus' teaching. Many people are doing Christianity, but they are not living the Beatitudes. They are not living as, as Jesus lived. Jesus are more interested in you be like him than do something for him. Many people try to do something for God and call it Christianity. But they become religious people instead to be more like Jesus. And that's why Jesus called them hypocrites. Bible is encouraged us to be like him. How? As we started this beatitude, be poor in the spirit and more for our sins and be meek and also show mercy and pursue for righteousness, hungry and thirsty for his word. We shall be like him. That's what Jesus said. That's the Holy Spirit said. That we one day will be perfect in heaven like him, but we are still in the process to climb up to the Mount Zion, to the Mount of Heaven, and be with Jesus forever. So in this climbing, we are in the process of becoming more like him. As we have started our faith, seeking for him, repenting for our sins, submitting our life to him, be filled with his spirit, sanctify ourselves, and pursuing in seeing God in our daily life, share the gospel, and endure even persecution for what we believe. That's the whole process to become more like him. And as Jesus was glorified, we will also be glorified in heaven. And our reward will be awaiting for us. What is God's will? God's will is you become more like him. And we all Christians must be like Jesus. The problem these days is that we are living in this war without showing the life of Jesus in us. And people, they just put in a level of just following our religion like any other religion in this world. Now, be honest to all of us. If we talk about like today, be merciful, all the religions in this world, they exercise mercy. Buddhists, they teach about mercy. Muslims also teach about mercy, even though it doesn't seem these days they are merciful. But if you go to honest Muslim people, they are merciful in, in some way, and they teach about mercy. But, what God desires for all of us is to be like Him, not just to do or pursue some kind of religion. What is the desire of, of, of God? What is His heart for all of us? The book of Hosea gives us an answer. For it says, For I desire mercy, no sacrifice, and acknowledgement of God's rather than barn offerings. In other words, what God was saying, I don't want you to worship but rather than you be more like me. These people, they are doing religion. They are worshiping God in a religious way, but they are not like Jesus. They are not like God. 
they become legalists, they become traditionalists, they just become part of a culture. But they are not like God. They are not like Jesus. And the problem is this world is thirsty and hungry for people like Jesus. But they cannot find him among Christianity. They cannot find him among Christians. God says, be merciful, just as your father is merciful. So if we are by nature children of our parents, we know that we have a DNA. We have some genes that we inherit from our father or our parents. And without thinking, we are acting like them. We are speaking like them. We are feeling like them. And that's why our parents and us, we are sympathizing in, in many things because we are all connected. In the same way, we, we have a spiritual father who have given us the spiritual DNA when we born again in the spirit. And now as children of God, we add and live like him naturally. We are not just pretend to be like God. We are by nature children of God. And if we are children of God, then we are merciful as he is merciful. There, and we, when we study discipleship, especially here in Korea, there's a curriculum called one-to-one -one discipleship from Honorary Church. It says that, talking about the attributes of God, there are attributes that are only belonging to God. That is, he's omniscient, he's omnipresent, he's omnipotent, he's sovereign, he's eternal. But there are some attributes that are sharing with humanity. And one of these attributes is mercy. God wants his children, his people be merciful as he is merciful. And he, the desire of God that we show mercy. We love mercy. We pursue mercy and we become like him, merciful. Desire in our heart mercy as we are giving away mercy. Another scripture that gives us understanding of God's will is that we should love mercy. Micah, in chapter 6, verse 8, said, He has shown you, O men, what is good, and what does the law require from you? What God wants from me? The answer here is in, in Micah, to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Now, these are Old Testament scriptures. Hosea, one of the prophets, and Micah, another prophet. For the Jews people, for the Jews audience, to receive this word of mercy, this word of grace, this word of blessing. But they ignore completely what God said. And now we Christians are taking this word from the Old Testament because they, these words are eternal. The Bible from cover to cover is the word of God, and it will be always the word of God. The Bible from cover to cover is absolutely true, even though this word denied that there's absolutely true. And that's why we take this word as truly word of God. And when God said that he requires for us to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly, that's what exactly we have to do. How do you ask, act justly? How do you love mercy? How do you walk humbly? Or in other words, how do you walk under grace? Because there are three words that we have to remember today. Justice, mercy, and grace. Justice, mercy, and grace. Because walk humbly means just we walk by grace. We live by grace. And without grace, we cannot be here in this world anymore. It's by grace that you have your job, you have your study, you have your money, you have your house, you have your car, you have your beautiful life. It's just by grace. So humbly, you have to receive all this thing that God given you. With grateful heart, you live the life that God grants you to live, and as you do that, you must be a righteous person, and you have to exercise mercy. But we have to understand these three concepts of justice, mercy, and grace. So, to understand the definition of justice, mercy, and grace in Bible terms, justice is giving a person what he deserves. And in any dictionary, you will find the same definition. Justice is giving a person what he or she deserves. Now, mercy is, giving up, is not giving a person what he or she deserves. That is mercy. It's not giving a person what he deserves or what he should, she deserves. Then grace is giving a person what he or she doesn't deserve. Doesn't deserve. You, by justice, you have to receive something. But by mercy, you have not received what you deserve to receive. And by grace, 
you are re this receiving what you didn't deserve to receive. That is salvation. That is justification. That, that is what we say the last week, the imputation of God's righteousness in you. Justice. Because God is just. And because of God's justice, His judgment must be performed in front of everyone who believes in Him. But if God judges as we are, we deserve to be punished. But instead to be punished, God show mercy. And instead to receive what we deserve, we don't receive what we deserve. But then how justice is, is performed, how justice is complete, if we don't receive what we deserve, then there's no judge. Where is justice in here? In the life of Jesus, who is grace. And God, by grace, he gave us what we didn't deserve. And who have to execute justice? Justice was executed in the life of grace, in the life of Jesus. Instead of you to be punished and judged, Jesus was punished and just on the cross of Calvary in your place. So you may be righteous, justified, you may receive mercy, and you live by grace humbly in the eyes of God. What is the way you are living? Do you really love mercy after understanding this? If you understand then, then you love mercy. And you must be merciful, knowing that mercy was you need. You need mercy because you deserve to be punished, and you are not punished by God's mercy. And that's what I ask God every day in my life. God, have mercy on me. Because I know that I, for my sins, I should be punished. But instead to be punished, God, bless me with a happy life. That's mercy. That's grace. Because I receive what I don't deserve. Instead to receive what I deserve. That is mercy and grace. One anonymous person wrote something like this. Mercy without justice is the mother of dissolution. Justice without mercy is cruelty. People in these days, they want to exercise mercy in their own conscience. As I say before, all the religions in this world, they also they want to exercise mercy as they understand what mercy is. And the most of the people in this world, they understand that if I give you mercy, I will receive mercy. And that's why people think this interpretation of the Beatitude means, okay, be merciful, so you will receive mercy. But in order that, okay, I will give you, so I will receive something from you. I show you mercy, so I will receive mercy for you. Now, if you are human being living in the same world that I live in this planet Earth, in this universe, you know that that never happens. You know that in this world you can show mercy to someone and this person won't give you mercy in return. That's the real world. So this concept of I show mercy and I will receive mercy, that's no truth. What God says in this world today in the Beatitude is that be merc happy are the merciful because they will receive mercy. It means that I understand the mercy of God, that by grace, I didn't receive what I deserve. But by grace, He gave me something different that is salvation. It's a happy life. It's a life that I'm safe, that I, I have, not by my works, not by what i done or I am, eternal life, a new birth. But because what God did for me on the cross, I am saved and I have eternal life. And I become a child of God. So I am a Christian, a follower of Christ by His mercy and His grace. So when God said, when Jesus said, happy are the merciful because they will receive mercy, it means that as much as I, I give away this mercy that I received from God to other people who also need mercy, God will pour, pour and pour more of His mercy on me because I'm giving away mercy. And as we see the other Beatitudes, I'm thirsty and hungry for more of God. Thirsty and hungry for His righteousness. Then the promise is that we will be filled. Then I'm thirsty and hungry for His mercy and God will pour more and more of His mercy on my life and in your life. 
so we can get away mercy and show mercy to this world and love mercy because we want more of his mercy more of his refreshment and merciful spirit in us that's what the justice of God is revealing in our life God have mercy for those who repent for those who want to come back to him for those who are poor in the spirit for those who mourn for their, for their sins for those who who, who are hungry and thirsty for those who are mid humbly looking for an opportunity to bless others God will grant mercy for all those people in the New Testament the Bible said that in Matthew 9 13 but God but go and learn what this mean I desire mercy not sacrifice for I have not come to call the righteous but the sinner now this war go and learn mercy were the words of Jesus but then he quoted what the prophet Hosea, Hosea says I desire mercy not sacrifice now Jesus was talking to who he was talking to the Pharisees to the Jews who were self-righteousness in their eyes they were right people they were people of God they deserve to be blessed and they deserve righteousness and they deserve to be rewarded by their faith and faithfulness to the law of God but they didn't exercise they didn't show they didn't love mercy probably because they they know that if they were exposing their sins there was there were no one in this world in those days who will forgive their sins except God but God is so holy and so pure that they cannot approach to God in repentance because they know that they will commit sin again and since they didn't know Jesus who is full of mercy and grace they didn't understand that God will be able to forgive all his sins past present and future with just one act of justice and one act of love and one act of mercy and one act of grace on the cross of Calvary in the Old Testament Isaiah said seek the Lord while he may be found call on him while he is near let the wicked forsake his way and the evil men his thoughts let him turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God for he will freely pardon he will freely forgive God have mercy not for those who are self-righteous not for those who say well I don't have anything to confess but for those who repent those who believe in the good news in the gospel and repent that's mercy granted for this person in this time when Jesus was teaching the Beatitudes he have this audience he was living in a, a, a time when religious and politic was so strong and they didn't have mercy for those who were living together with them we are talking that when Jesus was preaching to be merciful he was preaching to an audience that they like Romans the Romans they didn't show mercy to any one of their enemies actually we know that in this time they crucify all the political enemies all the, the people who were criminals with no compassion actually the word mercy in the Greek Testament means compassion they have no mercy they have no compassion for those who were criminals they just execute justice in their own power but there were not just an execution that like the Apostle Paul have who was decapitated like normally the Roman citizens they just were executed quickly but they don't feel more pain than just a few seconds but the crucifixion the crucifixion was a slow and painful death sometimes people who were crucified they remain for weeks there in agony in pain on those cross exposed to the whole society to see to be ashamed publicly to putting an example of God sorry as example of Roman justice as example of Roman power those who wants to follow their way will end like this on that cross in a slow and painful death what kind of mercy is that what kind of justice is that 
There were no justice on this. There were no mercy on this. It was a, a, a perverse mind to try to see pleasure in pain in other people's life. There were no mercy when Jesus was preaching this. But there were also the religious people, the Sadducees, the Pharisees. The, Phar the, the Pharisees because they were traditionalists. They always tried to put the law as a platform of justice. The law as a platform of mercy. And they, they sold poor people in the spirit. But they don't give mercy to them. Instead, they just them by the law that they have. And by the same law, they cast them away. Don't let anyone enter into God's presence and worship them. Not only this, the notorious sinners, like tax collectors and prostitutes and, and thieves, but also those who were paralytic, those who were crippled, those who have sons here, they cannot enter in the holiness of God, in the temple of God to worship. Like, remember in the New Testament when Peter and John, they were entering the temple to pray, they were a crippled man, they were a paralytic man who could not worship God in the temple because they were just cast away because they were sick. There were no mercy on, on those days for religious people. And here is what Jesus said. Go and learn what is mercy. He was saying this word when he called Matthew. And actually we are reading the book of Matthew as our curriculum for this year. And it's this Matthew who have recorded this beatitude, who recorded this passage of his life. When Jesus came into his house because he invited his friends, as Jesus called Matthew and said, Leva, come and follow me. You who are a tax collector. In those days, those who were tax collectors, they were enemies of the Jews. They were friends of Rome. And it means that they just don't have a job, but they were storming people. They were like a mafia. Is the Roman Empire say, okay, bring the tax for the people of Judea? They say, okay, we, we just want the 10% or one denario of what they, the ways that the people have, the tax collector, they freely ask for three denarios or 10 denarios. They keep nine in their pockets and give one to Rome. And that's why they became the enemies of their own people. And they were considered there among the sinful ones in their society. And these were the kind of people that Jesus went and had dinner with them. And the Pharisees said, how your master can sin with sinners and tax collectors, with prostitutes, with sinners, if he's the Messiah, if he's the, the, the a rabbi, how he can go and sin with sinners and spend time with sinners. And then when Jesus said these words, go and learn this. God desire mercy. God didn't come to call righteous, but to call sinners. And this morning, God is looking for sinners like me. Are you that we need we deserve to be judged but instead to be judged we receive mercy and we receive mercy because God gave us grace we give us we receive grace Augustine says trust the past to God's mercy the present to God's love and the future to God's providence Saint Augustine he understood what is mercy. Mercy is knowing that we, by the grace of God, we didn't receive what we deserve. So we trust that all our sins that we commit until now has been justified by God. Why? Because presently we have the love of God. And by His grace, we will continue receiving His love and we will continue receiving His mercy for the future sins that we will commit after this day. If we understand that God's great mercy and justice is exercised in His forgiveness, in the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, we have to understand that our sins, past, present, and future, has been forgiven and we now have, have eternal Jesus said, blessed are the merciful because they will receive mercy. People in time of Jesus, they didn't show mercy. They didn't love mercy. They didn't decide for mercy. And Jesus said, learn how to be a merciful. And he saw about a parable. Because someone asked him, okay, maybe I don't know about mercy, but I love God. 
How can you love God? It's God is a great commandment. To love your God with all yourself, with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your mind, with all your soul. And the second commandment is love your neighbor as yourself. That means that you have to love your neighbor as you show mercy to them. Then the question was, then who is my neighbor? And Jesus made a comparison with this parable. The parable of the one who was abused, who was tall, who was just living on the road without mercy. The war came on him, the evil war came on him and disposed everything that he had, steal everything that he had. He was one day happy, happily and go to the city of God and then in the way he just lost everything. Then came one Jew on the way, Sadducee, and saw that yes, there were a man who needs and desired mercy, compassion, kindness, attendance. But because they were religious people, a Levi, he had to go without touching sin, without touching death, because I is against the law. And if if I touch this person, I have the person, I won't be able to worship God. And then came the Pharisee who also see this person, and then he just go by. But then came a Samaria, Samaritan. And this good Samaritan, he show mercy. He show compassion to this person who was just laid down, abused, struggled by the current evil of, this, of his time, and take care of this. This is an example of love. This is an example of mercy. This is an example of grace that God is giving us to all of us. We were like this, this man who was in some way hated by the world. The devil came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And our life as, as miserable as this person on the road. And in this way of life, we are like this. And no one, no one in this world have enough mercy no religious people. And sometimes, no, even pastors have enough mercy for all of us. Only God is the one who will show real mercy. And we need Him. We need Him today. Actually, the same word that is quoted in Greek, mercy, in the Beatitudes, comes in the book of Hebrew. In the book of Hebrew, chapter 2, verse 17, the Bible said, For this reason he had to be made like his brother in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. Who is he? It's Jesus. He is the highest priest. And he had to become merciful and faithful highest priest. Now the word here, merciful, in the Greek means the one who put his its skin, the skin of the other person. In English version, in American version, the one who walks on his shoes. The one who was on your shoes. In other words, Jesus came to dress in your sins, to become your highest priest, to make a sacrifice, a tonic sacrifice for you to receive mercy. And by his faithfulness, you were saved. He walked on your shoes. He knows your pain. He knows your struggle this day. He knows how much you're suffering. And you, you know that the religion in this world have not given you enough mercy. The law has not given you enough mercy. And people who good intentions have not given you enough mercy because they wait mercy back from you. But only God is giving you mercy freely. With only one cause, the cause of the blood of Jesus. So what we have to do today, what we have to do now, come to the throne of grace. Come to the throne of grace, the throne of grace, mercy, and meet your highest priest. The Bible says also in Hebrew, let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy, mercy, and find grace to help us in our time of need. Do you think that you need mercy now? Because this sermon is just for need mercy now. Do you think that you, you need grace now? Because this sermon is for those who need grace now. I have to confess, I need mercy now. I need grace now. And if you need mercy and grace like me, then God, 
as the Bible says, is just to forgive all your sins. He's just to forgive all your sins. Because His justice will, exer will be exercised in the life and the sacrifice of Jesus for you, who is your highest priest, who is your king, who is your savior, who is your Lord, who is your friend, who is your God, in His name. Let's pray.